Vex Pop is a term that encompasses almost every threat that reagents will face during the events of the game The Outlast Trials. Aggressive killers that have been transformed due to the experiments of Project Lathe, X-Pops are the result of Dr. Easterman's first attempts at creating an effective system for churning out brainwashed subjects. Forced into terrifyingly traumatic situations designed to warp minds, these people would begin to lose all sense of who they used to be, and develop devastatingly violent psychopathy. <laughs> The story of the X-Pops as we know it begins with a man named Dr. Hendrik Joliet Easterman and his involvement with a corporation known as Murkoff. In 1953, Easterman would be approached by the CIA after attending a speech at Princeton that was presumably on the topic of brainwashing. The CIA was interested in the prospect and would recruit the good doctor to study it in Hong Kong before eventually helping to fold him into a study being conducted by the Murkoff Corporation on dream therapy. For Easterman, however, these studies would prove too pseudoscientific for his liking. He believed that a more tangible approach to the topic would produce better results. And so, with Murkoff's financial support, he would break away from Los Alamos sometime in 1956 to form the Senyala facility. It would be here that his own excursions into brainwashing could truly begin under the codename of Project Lathe or Limbic Aggression Therapy. Easterman's first foray into mind control would be rather rudimentary, using things like copious injections of pharmaceuticals and operant conditioning in the hopes of creating subconscious triggers that would allow for predetermined control. To that end, he would begin recruiting via outreach centers established in some of the biggest cities in the US, and also receive multitudes of patients from Murkoff's own Mount Massive Asylum. On top of that, he had also made special requests for more specific patients, sending a man named Clyde Perry to find extremely charismatic, morally bankrupt monsters to slot into his Prime Assets program. All of these participants would be dubbed as X-Pop or the Experimental Population, and with all the pieces having fallen into place, the horrors of the Senyala facility could finally begin. Easterman would subject many different volunteers to the horrors of Project Lathe. But despite his best efforts, the results would prove unimpressive. He could flood their minds with trauma, make them wholly desensitized to taboo things like murder or any number of perversions, but he couldn't then use those traumas to get any kind of foothold for control. Even after dissecting deceased X-Pop's brains, he could see no correlation between the stimulus he would provide and the lesion growth that it would create. All told, he would consider the project an overwhelming disaster. He had created psychotics, but none that were of any use. And worse, Murkoff could also see that his process was floundering and would threaten to pull funding from the project entirely. With this threat looming, Easterman would return to the drawing board to see where his process had failed, coming up with a theory that it had been his patients that were the shortfall. The X-Pops had been too filled with trauma before they even arrived to truly become the blank canvas that he needed. He needed people who were truly unexceptional, adult age children who had nothing going for them other than the fact that they were born in America. With these revelations, he would return to his investors at Murkoff and ask for another chance. And from this, Project Lathe 2 would be born. He would call these new recruits reagents, so named because his plan was to reintroduce them into the world as agents once their therapy had been completed. But as for the X-Pop, they had been moved from the subjects of the trauma and now became its instructors. <laughs> Easterman and the staff at Senyala would repurpose their broken toys into threats to overcome in the trials they'd been planning for the reagents, breaking the X-Pops into different categories depending largely on the circumstances from which they initially arrived at the facility. General X-Pops consisted primarily of the unexceptional who signed up for Lathe 1, people with a high degree of vanishability who wouldn't be missed in society nor were they of particular note in the study. 
Considered unintelligent and highly exploitable, these people would gravitate towards the charismatic prime assets and their guidance. Heavy X Pops would be considered equally malleable, but much more childish in nature. These people have themselves been repurposed into Project Lathe after previously having participated in another study at Los Alamos. That study had subjected them to hormone therapy and limb extension surgery, the former of which had left their minds broken and given them their substandard intellect. Similarly, Berserkers would also undergo a form of limb extension surgery. Before that, they were the subjects in a prison experiment to test the effects of a weaponized strain of syphilis, leaving them blind and with dementia. They would then be transferred to Los Alamos, where the researchers would contort their bodies, as well as place steel pins in their sensitive skin to expand their tactile awareness. Another class of X-Pops transferred from Los Alamos would be the Screamers. These patients would be given an exorbitant amount of amphetamines to induce a waking nightmare state, in which they would enter a non-REM near sleep. Essentially, this would put them in near catatonia, from which they would become extremely sensitive to noise. If they become startled, they'll scream with their cancer-regeneratively altered vocal cords, which can stun those with an earshot. <laughs> Another easily startled X-Pop, the Pouncer, would be shipped into Sinyala from the Mount Massive Asylum. These people were originally patients who showed a high degree of paranoid anxiety, the fallout of Lathe causing them to stoop even further into their paranoid delusions. To combat perceived threats of electromagnetic fields, these poor souls would create their own makeshift Faraday cages, shoving nails, wires, and scraps of metal into their flesh for protection from the imaginary threat. Perhaps the most interesting of all the X-Pop, however, are the Pushers, former staff of the facility that have lost themselves to psychosis after prolonged exposure to the chemical compounds used within the trials. This exposure has caused them to feel that they have some form of relationship with the so-called Skinner Man that all patients hallucinate after exposure to the psychoactive compounds within the experiments. All these X-Pomps, along with a handful of others, would be distributed into the trial environments to become the Teachers of Trauma, joining the prime assets of Coil and Gooseberry as Eastermen attempted to break the newly recruited reagents and reduce them into nothing, a task that was the only one that Project Lathe had left them capable of ever achieving. X-Pop are among the most diverse and interesting people that can be found on the grounds of the Sinyala facility. Patients that have been absolutely broken by the things they've been subjected to at the hands of Murkoff, and have been reduced down into nothing more than babbling psychotics, with nothing left but violent tendencies to keep them going. The X-Pop are the forgotten fodder of progress, exploited souls who have been chewed up by Eastermen's horrific machines. And while today they may be far beyond saving, not so very long ago they were being tested just like you.